Hello everyone, welcome to my next lesson on practical coastal navigation. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own navigation skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of experience and ability. Any charts you may see in this video are not for navigation purposes. They may be out of date and they are for explanation purposes only. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. In this lesson, we're starting to look at the Canadian Aids to Navigation System. This first lesson is on lateral beacons. Okay, so what specifically is a lateral beacon? A lateral beacon marks the edge of a safe channel. You can find them on one or both sides of a channel. It depends on the geography. They can be floating buoys, or they can be beacons on land at the edge of a channel, or they can be mounted on concrete bases secured onto rocks in an intertidal region. Now, you don't want to run into a beacon or a buoy with your boat but the water is considered safe up to the edge of a beacon. These beacons are called lateral beacons because you will take them laterally on your starboard hand or on your port hand to stay in safe water, except for bifurcation beacons, which mark a split channel. It is not safe to pass by a lateral beacon on the wrong side. Let's take a look at what they look like. These are examples of floating beacons. There are floating buoys, spars, and cans, and they're secured in place by a chain anchored to the seabed. Red beacons are called starboard hand beacons because you keep them on your starboard hand, and green beacons are port hand beacons. What that means is, as you progress, traveling in the same direction as the direction of the flood tide, or in an upstream direction in inland waters, then in that direction, you keep the red beacons on your starboard hand to stay in the safe part of a channel, and you keep the green beacons on your port hand. Of course, if you're going in the opposite direction, you do exactly the opposite. And it also doesn't matter whether the tide is flooding or ebbing while you're there. The direction of the flood tide is just used to designate them as starboard hand or port hand. The memory aid for which color of beacon is which is RRR, or red right returning. Because a flood tide will flow into an enclosed harbor, then if you're returning into an enclosed harbor, you keep a red beacon on your right. So that's red right returning. But it's just a memory aid to help you remember that red lateral beacons are starboard hand beacons. But not all beacons are located at the entrances to enclosed harbors, and we'll look at some confusing examples. But first, Let's look at some other characteristics of these buoys and beacons. You can also notice that the starboard hand beacons have pointed tops and the port hand beacons have flat tops. That is always the case. So even if you are red green colorblind, you can still distinguish between starboard hand and port hand beacons. It doesn't matter if you're looking at buoys or cans or spars. Their top shapes always follow this pattern. These buoys may have top lights to make them visible at night, which I'll describe in the next lesson. My next lesson will be about the letters used on Canadian charts to describe the characteristics of navigation beacons. Besides these lighted buoys, there are also day shapes, which are also used to mark the edges of channels. They're called day shapes because they don't have lights and they're only visible in daylight hours. They're often mounted on concrete bases on rocks to mark the edges of channels. Their shapes are very similar to the buoys. The red day shapes are starboard hand beacons and have pointed tops. The green day shapes are port hand beacons. They have flat tops and they have black or green squares in the center. Some lateral beacons are fixed light stations mounted on rocks. They can look like small lighthouses. 
Here's one at the entrance to Silver Bay on Shipyard Rock. It also has FLG for flashing green light written beside it. That's the kind of light used for green port hand beacons, but I'll describe that further in my next lesson. So it's a port hand beacon, and here is a port hand floating can. The G denotes that it's green, and that's how we know it's a port hand can. Make sure you go past this can before you turn into the inner part of Silva Bay. You can also notice that this can has a marking of U39. That's a designator that identifies this specific buoy. All navigation aids will have these marked directly on the aid, and the designator allows you to look up this aid in the Canadian publication named List of Lights, Boys, and Fog Signals. You should have this publication on board, and you can use it for your trip planning. The placement of some buoys can be confusing, considering the red right returning memory aid. It's important to check your charts to make sure you know what is the direction of the flood tide and how these lateral beacons mark off safe waters. Let's look at some potentially confusing examples to understand this clearly. Here is part of your pass. There's a green bell buoy here. We know it's a green port hand buoy because of the letters FLG which stands for flashing green light. And the letter G underneath the beacon means it's a green colored beacon. Now, if you're going into the Gulf Islands, clearly you have to keep this bellboy to your starboard. So is it on the wrong side? Actually, no. As I discussed in the last lesson, the flood tide flows out of the Gulf Islands and out into Georgia Strait. So this is a clear indicator that red right returning is just a memory aid and it applies only to an enclosed harbor. You always have to check your charts to make sure you know where the safe waters are. If you're exiting the Gulf Islands through Porlier Pass, then you're traveling in the direction of the flood tide. So you would keep this port hand buoy on your port hand to stay in safe water. This next example can also be very confusing. Here is Schwartz Bay, where the ferries dock on Vancouver Island. There are two passes through these islands outside the bay, with lateral buoys marking the way through these passes. If you look closely, here are two red starboard hand buoys that seemingly should be kept on your port hand to enter Schwartz Bay. And here is another red starboard hand buoy that also looks like it needs to be kept on your port hand, entering Schwartz Bay through this pass. What's going on here? In fact, the flood currents come up from the south and out through these two passes like this. These passes are not really entrances to Schwartz Bay. They're just islands nearby where a flood tide heads out from Schwartz Bay. So in fact, these starboard hand beacons are correctly placed because if you're entering Schwartz Bay through these passes, then you're heading in the direction of the ebbing tide and you will keep these starboard hand beacons on your port hand. This again demonstrates the need to always consult your charts without relying on an unverified interpretation of what you think the boys are telling you. Check your charts. Another type of lateral beacon is called a bifurcation beacon. Bifurcation beacons mark the edge of a channel that splits into two channels. When a channel splits in two, one of the two channels will be designated as the primary channel. It's the larger and more significant channel. But the secondary channel is often adequate for most of our small vessels as well. Bifurcation beacons also have starboard hand and port hand designations. But we need to be very careful to understand what their designations mean. A common mistake is to think that a starboard hand bifurcation beacon directs you to your starboard to enter the primary channel. That is incorrect. Remember, a starboard hand beacon is one that is kept on your starboard hand. So a starboard hand bifurcation beacon is also kept on your starboard hand to enter the primary channel. So if you are proceeding in the same direction as the flood tide and you encounter a starboard hand bifurcation buoy, you must keep it on your starboard hand to enter the primary channel, which is to your port. And a port hand bifurcation beacon must be kept on your port hand to enter the primary channel. Okay, let's look at what these beacons look like. These are bifurcation buoys. These also can be buoys, cans, or spars. 
As you can see, they have colorings of both red and green because they mark channel split. But a starboard hand bifurcation buoy is predominantly red, and a port hand bifurcation buoy is predominantly green. The starboard hand bifurcation buoy also has a pointed top, just like a normal starboard hand buoy, and the port hand bifurcation buoy has a flat top. This diagram is only intended to show what these buoys look like and on which side of each is the primary channel. You wouldn't find two buoys together like this because there will only be one bifurcation buoy located at the start of a channel split. So let's look at a real example. Here's a bifurcation buoy that marks the beginning of Gabriola Reefs. This buoy is colored green, red, green. So green is the predominant color, so it's a port hand bifurcation buoy. The tide here goes north, so if you're heading north, this port hand bifurcation buoy must be kept on your port hand to enter the primary channel. The primary channel is to your starboard, and here that's out to Georgia Strait. The secondary channel is to the port, and it's clearly more difficult to navigate there with rocks and shallows on both sides. If you're planning to follow the secondary channel in towards Silva Bay, which I have personally done on several occasions, you may wish to set up a magnetic transit line like this to get safely through these shallows and rocks. There are also bifurcation day shapes like these. Again, you wouldn't find two together like this. It's just a diagram to illustrate what they look like and where the primary channel would be for each. They are both diamond shaped, but the port hand bifurcation day shape has a green interior with a flat top, while the starboard hand one has the pointed top triangle inside. The key thing to remember about these shapes is that they are both diamonds. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at special beacons, including cardinal beacons and other navigation stations, and how they're denoted on Canadian charts.